penalty kicks present an interesting strategic dilemma. Usually, strikers want to aim to either the left or the right side of the net, into the corners, so that even if the goalkeeper were to dive in the correct direction, they would be unable to stop the shot. Likewise, the goalkeeper needs to decide whether to dive to the left or dive to the right. What makes this decision tricky is that the keeper does not have enough time to see where the ball is going and then dive in that direction. If they were to wait, then the ball would pass them by the time they actually completed that dive. As a result, the keeper must decide which direction to dive at about the same time the ball is kicked. This is why sometimes you'll see keepers diving in the complete wrong direction. It's not because they're necessarily bad, it's just that they're playing a guessing game and they guessed wrong. This also means that both players have an incentive to not behave predictably. For example, imagine that the keeper consistently dove to our right. Then the striker could consistently kick to the left, where there's an open net and a much higher probability of scoring. But if the striker consistently kicked to the left, then the keeper could consistently dive to the left and stop that shot a little bit more often. But if the goalkeeper were consistently diving to the left, the striker could consistently kick to the right instead, again where there is an open net. But then the keeper could dive to the right and stop those shots. But now we have the striker wanting to go back to the left, and we have the cycle beginning anew. Thus, it is clear that the striker sometimes needs to kick to the left, and sometimes needs to kick to the right. The goalkeeper likewise needs to sometimes dive to the left, and sometimes dive to the right. The specific probabilities of doing each of those actions is a little bit less clear. Fortunately, game theory can help us get to that question, as well as more complicated puzzles, like the subject of this video. Imagine that this matrix reflects the probability of scoring a goal and giving up a goal respectively for the striker and the goalie. The striker can choose whether to kick to the left or kick to the right. The goalie decides whether to dive to the left or dive to the right. And based off of the pair of strategies given, we have the probability of the goal. For example, if the striker kicks left and the goalie dives left, then 36% of the time, the striker will score and equivalently, 36% of the time, the goalkeeper will give up a goal. Moving on, for kick left, dive right, we have a 92% chance, for kick right, dive left, an 83% chance, and for kick right, dive right, a 21% chance. Here's the central puzzle for today. Imagine that you're the striker, and prior to the next game, you can improve your aim either to the left side or to the right side by practicing shooting in that general direction. If you spend your time practicing to the left, you will increase your probability of scoring a goal by two percentage points, regardless of the decision of the goalkeeper. You go up from 36 to 38 and from 92 to 94. It's the same story if you practice to the right. Regardless of what the keeper does, you will increase your chances of scoring a goal by two percentage points, from 83 to 85, or 21 to 23. And let's further imagine that the other team's scouting is very good, so they'll know which way you've practiced. Given that, what should you do? Should you practice to the left, or should you practice to the right? Which is going to result in a higher overall probability of you scoring a goal. And while you're thinking about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. You can find more information about them in the video description. Let's talk about the answer in broad strokes. Think about your strengths and weaknesses at the default probabilities you should realize that you have a stronger left side. If you kick to the left and the keeper dives in the incorrect direction, you score 92% of the time. In contrast, if you kick right and the goalie guesses wrong, you only score 83% of the time. It's a similar story if the goalie's guessing in the correct direction. If you kick left while they dive left, you're still scoring 36% of the time, 
because there's a good chance that you'll find that small little corner where the goalkeeper can't reach. In contrast, if you kick right while the goalie dives right, you're only scoring 21% of the time. Based off of this, it's reasonable to conclude that you should improve your right side. It is the weak link in your game, and so adding two percentage points to kicking to the right, regardless of what the goalie does, seems like it would be a very good idea. The problem with that thinking is that it's failing to capture the strategic considerations. When you increase your probability of scoring in one direction, that not only affects your incentives, it also affects the incentives of what the goalie might want to do. And you care a lot about the goalie's decision. Look at your outcomes when the goalie dives left versus when the goalie dives right. If they're diving left and you kick in the same direction, you're scoring 36% of the time. If you kick in the opposite direction, you're scoring 83% of the time. You will notice that the straight average between those two numbers is larger than the straight average of the two numbers when the goalie dives right, namely 92% and 21%. You actually have a vested interest in convincing the goalie to dive left more often. One way to do that is to kick to the left more often, so that it seems like you have a greater incentive to do so, and thus to counteract your behavior, the goalkeeper has a greater incentive to dive in that direction, which, as it appears here, ultimately plays out in your favor. And that is indeed the case. The correct answer is that you should practice kicking to the left. Surprisingly, you can cover for your weakness of kicking to the right by being even stronger on your left side. What makes this question interesting to me is how basic it is. There are people doing this all over the world, even right now as you're listening to this, someone is practicing their penalty kicks, I'm sure of it. And yet, demonstrating that it is better in this particular scenario to practice on the left rather than practice on the right is actually quite a complicated task. In total, proving it is a three-step process. The first step is to calculate each player's optimal strategy for both of the games. That is, the game that takes place after you've practiced to your left, and the game that takes place after you've practiced to the right. Once we've done that, we can calculate the expected goals given the optimal strategies. And once we've done that for both games, we can simply compare the two choices and see which is going to produce more goals on average. Let's start at the top by calculating each player's optimal strategy. Fortunately, game theory gives us a very clear guideline on how to do this. We've talked before about the need to randomize between your two strategies, so you're not predictable and can't be exploited by the other side. Fortunately, we have an algorithm that gives us a very specific answer on what that exact mixing probability should look like. The key for the striker's decision is to make the goalie indifferent between diving to the left and diving to the right. If the goalie can't benefit by going in one direction or another, then there's nothing that the goalie can do to exploit your own strategy. Let's start with what happens if you've practiced to your left. Well, we can work on this by calculating what the payoffs are for the goalie for each of those two outcomes as a function of the mixing probability that you have between kicking to the left and kicking to the right. For example, if the goalie were to dive to the left, and P is the probability that you kick to the left, then 38% of the time they'll give up a goal in that kick to the left scenario, and 83% of the time they'll give up a goal in that kick to the right scenario, where again, P is representing the probability of kicking to the left, and 1 minus P is therefore the probability of kicking to the right. We can do that same calculation for the dive right strategy. 94% of the time they'll give up a goal whenever you kick to the left, and 21% of the time, they will give up a goal whenever you have kicked to the right. If we set those two payoffs equal to one another and then solve for P, we have the equilibrium mixed strategy that the striker should pursue. Specifically, the striker should kick to the left 31 out of every 59 times and kick to the right the remaining 28 out of every 59 times. We can run through the same algorithm to find out what the goalkeeper should be doing. Its mixture needs to guarantee that the striker can't exploit it, 
which means figuring out how to make the payoff for the striker of kicking to the left equal to the payoff of the striker for kicking to the right. If we write down the payoff of kicking to the left for the striker as a function of Q, the probability that the goalkeeper dives left, and then do the same thing for the payoff of kicking to the right, and then set those two things equal to each other and solve for Q, we get that the keeper should be diving to the left 73 out of every 118 times, and diving to the right 45 out of every 118 times. So that takes care of the optimal strategies for what happens if you've practiced to the left. We can do the exact same thing for what happens if you've practiced to the right. It's the same sort of calculations, except all we have to do is change where we've added two percentage points to. And if we do this to figure out how the striker should be behaving, then we find that 31 out of every 59 times, the striker should be kicking to the left. And the remaining 28 out of 59 times, they should be kicking to the right. And then doing that for the keeper, we get that they should be diving to the left 69 out of every 118 times and diving to the right 49 out of every 118 times. That's step one. Step two is to calculate the expected goals given those optimal strategies. Calculating that is a simple multiplication and addition procedure. Think about how often a goal will be scored after we've had the striker kick to the left and the goalie dive to the left. Well, 31 out of every 59 times, the striker will pursue that strategy, and 73 out of every 118 times, the keeper will pursue that strategy. And conditional on both of those things happening simultaneously, the goal will be scored 38% of the time. So if we multiply 31 divided by 59 times 73 divided by 118 times 38 divided by 100, then we have the probability of a goal being scored through that particular set of circumstances. There are three other ways that a goal could be scored, though, so we have to go through each of those probabilities, and once we've done that and added them all together, we have the overall probability of a goal being scored for this particular game, after the striker has practiced to the left. And that works out to be about 59.36% of the time that a goal will be scored. And it's the same procedure if the striker has previously practiced to the right. Doing all that multiplication and addition, we find that the goal will be scored about 59.25% of the time. And now we're at the last step, which is to compare the two choices. And fortunately, this is the easiest of the steps because we're just comparing two numbers and we're seeing which one is larger. And as you can tell, the expected goals after practicing to the left is slightly larger than the expected goals after practicing to the right. About one in every thousand times you'll score an extra goal by having practiced to the left as compared to having practiced to the right. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.